So back in December, my dog and I hit the road in my old Subaru to do some traveling for an extended period of time. The plan was to pretty much be living out of the car, dispersed camping, staying in rest stops and that sort of thing. And uh, up until this pandemic hit, that's pretty much exactly what we were doing. We were out exploring, seeing the mountains. We drove down to Florida and camped on the beach. Uh, luckily, I have some family here in North Carolina. So when this pandemic hit, I had a place to go. But in the next month or so, I'm going to be heading back to the West Coast and making my way back and kind of starting again as things are opening up. But a topic I haven't seen covered a lot, even though I see a lot of people doing this kind of living on the road thing with a dog, is how to get ready so that you're best equipped to be living on the road with a dog. So I'm gonna share those things with you. My name's Donovan Thurman. Join me and my dog Remy as we travel off the beaten path in my trusty old Subaru. So the very first thing that I wanted to do and that I did do before we left on this trip was take her into her vet. We've, she's had the same vet since she was a puppy and make sure she was up to date on shots and do a regular checkup and her vaccines and everything like that and stocked up on her like flea and heartworm medication. So a good medical checkup is very important. And then also have them print out or give you a copy of her, I say her, cause she's my dog, of your dog's full medical records that, that they can access. I mean, she's, like I said, been going to that vet since she was a puppy, so they had absolutely everything. So I got a full printout of her vet records to bring with me, just in case something happened, she got hurt, I needed to take her into a vet in an emergency. They wouldn't have to be trying to contact her vet back in Oregon to get her records. I just have them and I could walk in with them and they can know exactly what medications she's been on before, if she's got any allergies those kind of things. So have their medical records with them. Their immunization records are important. Um, and like I said, make sure to have plenty of stored up medications. Uh, Remy's on a monthly heartworm medication as well as a monthly flea and tick medication. She gets those at the beginning of the month, every month. It's a regular schedule. Um, the ones she gets require a vet um, prescription. So I just stocked up on a bunch of those and I keep those in a bag with her stuff. And so at the beginning of every month, she gets her medications. The other thing I stocked up on was um, different kind of medications for th issues she c typically has. Uh, she's a, a Weimaraner. They have long floppy ears. And uh, well, anybody with a dog that has long floppy ears um, can probably relate to this, is that they get kind of dirty really bad and, um, and they can get infected pretty easily. So... I made sure to pack a whole bunch of ear wipes for her, but also a medicated, um, uh, it's kind of a cream that uh, treats infections. So if I notice that she's scratching her ear a lot and I look in there and it's all red and inflamed, I can give her a little bit of that medicated cream. So it's just good to keep any extra meds that you can, talk to your vet, see if there's anything they recommend you bring along as far as medications go. Kind of along the lines, I mentioned cleaning ears is grooming. Um, you know, certain dogs are different, but uh, they all pretty much can get a little bit of a funky smell. I just make sure one of the easiest things I can do to, to keep her clean is to bring along some just bath wipes. Uh, they're basically like a baby wipe kind of, but they're for dogs and so I'll take out one or two of those if she's starting to smell kind of funky and give her a wipe down. And uh, that usually can tide her over. And uh, if she's really bad or she rolls in something, it's not too hard to find, you know, self-serve dog wash places. I know some Petco's even have a self-serve dog wash place. So that's an option as well. Um, as far as smelling up the car, like she spends a lot of time in the car because, you know, especially if we're on a long haul trying to get someplace, then, uh, yeah, the car can get kind of funky. And the, there's a couple things I highly recommend. One, just having good air fresheners around and regularly stopping to vacuum maybe once every couple weeks, trying to just vacuum off 
the seats or whatever you have, the carpets and stuff, to try and get rid of that smell. Um, you can keep just normal air fresheners in the car. Uh, I don't, I used to use Febreze, but it's not really good for dogs. Um, it's not really good for people either, especially in an enclosed space like that. So I don't like spraying those chemicals around. I found that if you go to kind of like a home goods or a store like that that has home supplies, you can get um, sachets that, you know, the little scented bags you can like drop in your vacuum cleaner and or just hang around the house and stuff. I put a, a couple of those in the car and they last a long time and they, they smell good and clean. The last specific smell related product that I keep in the car with me, I keep a little mixed up bottle of it, is a product called KOE. It's Kennel Odor Eliminator. Uh, for right before we left, I I worked at a dog daycare for a little bit, and this stuff is amazing. It's a it's safe to use on around the dogs where they're going to be. It's not nasty chemical like Febreze, um, and it's like it comes in a concentrated bottle. So you just add a tiny squirt to that, mix it with water, and you can spray it. I spray, you know, my blankets and the sleeping area, my sleeping pad and stuff. And it, it smells clean. It doesn't have a weird smell. It kind of smells like wool like carpet foam. But that's specifically made for dog odors and it works fantastic. And one concentrated bottle would last you a long time. Uh, they would last quite a while even at the daycare where we're, we were using them every day. So I highly recommend that stuff. I'll put a link down below. Okay, now exercise. You know, maybe it's a lot easier if you have a little dog. Um, it's kind of a little bit crazy that I'm, I'm you know, traveling and doing these things with a Weimaraner. They are very, very high strung dogs. <laughs> Ask anybody that knows anything about dog breeds and has been around Weimaraners or owned them, they have a lot of energy. So I pretty much plan a lot of my trips and around trying to find the next dog park if I'm going to be driving through a, a town. If I'm camped out somewhere, usually I'm if I'm camping, I try and drive far away so I can kind of let her wander around and get some running out and stuff around the campsite. I don't camp in campgrounds, so don't yell at me for not having her leashed. <laughs> I usually find a, it's the farthest, most remote dispersed site I can and let her run around and I'll throw a ball. But dog parks are amazing. Um, if your dog doesn't get along well with other dogs, mm, you might just have to get out and literally go for a run with them. But uh, yeah, dog parks are, are an amazing savior. Uh, and yeah, I literally plan stops based on where's the next dog park. And along that line too, sort of, um, a lot of times when you're traveling, you know, there's places you want to go, say like a museum or something where dogs aren't allowed, obviously, you're not just gonna leave the dog in the car <laughs> when you go into a museum. It could be hot out. People are gonna smash their windows and leave nasty notes and yell at you or whatever. You don't wanna leave the dog in the car if you can avoid it. Um, if I have to do things like running into the store, I try and do it early in the morning, first thing, like right when they open or late at night when it's cooler in the day. And if for some reason I can't, I keep an extra key in the car with me and I leave the AC on full blast for her, and I, I have thermal curtains, and I put those out, do whatever I can. Anyways, kind of got sidetracked there. If you want to go and see things like a museum, um, I highly recommend trying out uh, rover.com. You can find like a daycare, a pet sitter, um, people that watch dogs from their home. Um, it might seem a little bit weird, but you know, every profile has reviews on there. People have their list their charges. Uh, I've taken Remy um, to a to a lady's house, and she kind of did this like full time. She just watched people's dogs, and uh, we went to the zoo, and and she stayed at somebody's house, and she did fine. The lady was nice. She sent me pictures, texted me like every half an hour or so with a picture and let me know she was doing okay. So Rover's kind of a really awesome option if you're wanting to go places where dogs aren't allowed. Okay, so storing her food. Um, there's not really too much to it. I mean, you can store it however the best way suits for you. What I do is use a, 
I don't even think it's a five gallon bucket, but just a, you know, that kind of a bucket, five gallon. Um, but I keep one of those gamma seal lids on there that you spin in the lid closed. And that's what I put her dog food in with a little scoop. And it's nice because you don't have that funky dog food smell <laughs> kind of permeating in the car. And I'm trying to remember the weight of the bag. I think her bucket fits like a 20 or 30 pound bag of dog food almost perfectly. So that works out pretty well. Oh, and as far as water goes, I just bring a lot with me. I, I keep her water bowl kind of nearby. I have a big storage box next to where she likes to ride in the car. And I have some rubber stuff on the bottom of her water bowl. And I just put a little bit of water in there so it doesn't spill and make a huge mess. I just put enough water in there that if she feels like she needs to take a drink, she can drink it and I'll just, I can top it off with my water bottle or whatever and just keep a little bit in there so she always has something. Um, sleeping. Every vehicle is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, I used to bring her dog bed in the car with me. I don't really anymore. I kind of traded out the dog bed, which took up a lot of space for like a square pillow. And I just kind of lay that next to my sleeping pad and we just kind of cuddle up next to each other. Um, typically I, I use sleeping bags or I have a couple blankets too. Uh, I unzip my sleeping bag all the way and just kind of open it up like a big blanket and lay it over both of us. Sleeping isn't that big of a deal for me, even in a smallish vehicle like a Subaru. If you have a van or an RV, heck, you're probably golden. And the last tip is definitely take a lot of pictures because, <laughs> um, you know, I don't want to get too deep into it, but you know, like dogs aren't around forever. So they don't live quite as long as they, sh they, we'd all hope they should, you know, or think they should. So take a lot of pictures if you're traveling with your dog and you're having fun, you know, uh, you know, Remy's like my kid. I take lots of pictures like the one behind me. That was our first camping trip in North Carolina. We got up extra early and watched the uh, ocean sunrise because I'd never seen one before. Uh, you know, the ocean or the, <laughs> the sun sets over the ocean on the West Coast. So I'd never seen the sunrise before. So that's what that picture is behind me. So take lots of pictures, have lots of fun, you know, and uh, just make sure you're looking out for the dog. And it really does make, it changes your trips. Um, <laughs> you know, sometimes it can be a little bit frustrating. You feel like, oh man, I can't go do this thing because I have the dog, but uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, traveling by myself and just having the dog, if I was by myself completely, I feel like I'd be bored and lonely all the time. She provides comedic relief and just a fun travel partner. So get out there, have fun. Don't be afraid to take your dog with you if you're willing to just take the steps to make sure that it's safe and comfortable for them to be on the road as well. So that's it for this video. Remy and I will see you on the next one. If you like to follow along with the rest of our adventures, make sure to subscribe. And to make sure you don't miss out on any other videos, click the notification bell as well.